Hi guys. I just filmed a video um, with doing foiling with stamps. So you'll have to go back and watch that video. We'll show you a couple of things that came out of it. Um, clean up my little mess I got going on here. Um, so here are some of the images I got. This was using this Hero Arts poinsettia stamp. Okay, here was using a sentiment stamp. And here are two with the stag head. So if you didn't catch that video, I'll link it at the end for you. Um, but at, while I was doing this, I thought, well, you know, I have the foil quill for my um, Gemini machine. I do not have the handheld one. I honestly probably will not invest in it. It takes a lot of patience to do the foil quill stamping or the foil quill uh, hot foil system. In case any of you are not familiar, what the foil quill does is it's basically a heated tip. You can put it in your silhouette, your brother, um, scan and cut, your Cricut electronic machine, and anything that you can sketch, it can uh, use hot foil to activate it. Now they have a handheld one. So what I got out is my, um, this is from Becky Higgins, but I believe We Are Memory Keepers does manufacture this. But this was that, that tool that, the heat tool that you can use to melt your plastic and things like that. I normally have this little rotary tip on it. And when my stamping folders are too big, let me show you what I mean. So here, like this little stamp bag is too big. I take the little rotary tool and heat seal the edges. So now my stamps are in there without sliding around. So that's what you would normally use it for, right? But I thought, well, since I already have it out, let me change the tip. This one came with this little tip here. Um, and again, it's designed to cut those heat melted plastics and things like that. But I'm gonna use some of the We Are Memory Keepers uh, hot foil foil. And I'm gonna see if I can do my own kind of uh, foiling here. Now, I do wanna grab one more thing. Hold on. Okay, now this I picked up at, I think, Home Depot. Either Home Depot or Lowe's, and it's just a 12 by 12 piece of steel. Now, I know there is a magnetic mat sold by We Are Memory Keepers. I picked this up at my hardware store for 5 or $6. And you can use magnets to hold down your paper and your foil. So let me grab some magnets out of my mink here. I mean, my uh, mini Misty. Misty. My Misty tool. So these are my Misty magnets. So here's my thought. I don't know if this is going to work or not. You guys are watching me do a live experiment here. Now, here's one thing I will tell you. This will not work with regular foil. You, you have to use heat-activated foil. The companies that make heat-activated foil are We Are Memory Keepers for the foil quill. You have the Gemini um, foil press foil. You have Spellbinders, Glimmer foil, uh, Toto foil, which is a European country uh, company. You have uh, Couture Creations. So those are all hot foil companies. Now I know someone's going to argue with me and say that's not true. So here is a piece of like Deco foil. Here's a piece of Gina K foil. And I will show you when you take heat to these because there is no heat to stick it to the paper. There's no um, adhesive. See, they will not stick to the paper. So do not bother using um, regular foil. It's not going to work, okay? You have to use heat-activated foil. Anyway, so this is the general idea of the foil quill. If you think you're going to be interested in that, so that is something you're going to use, go ahead and go out and grab one of those. I'm probably not going to. I wanted to see if it would work with something I already have in stock. So I'm going to use some of this detailed ink from Brutus Monroe. This is a permanent ink because I'm going to be stamping on a slick surface here, which is this silver heat activated foil. Let me move this piece out of the way here. 
and I just want to stamp this image down onto, again, heat activated foil. Okay, it's going to give us an idea here. And you want that shiny side up, you want the matte side down. Now there's a couple different size tips you can get on the foil quill. There's fine, there's regular, there's bold, there's calligraphy. So this I would assume would be considered more of a fine tip. This is a plug-in one. The foil quill you would plug into some kind of a battery box. It's powered by USB. So at this point, all you're going to do is very carefully trace your image. This is gonna give you that hand-drawn look but what it's doing is, as it's heating up the foil, it's activating the adhesive that's built into the foil. And that adhesive is now taking the foil and allowing the foil to stick to our paper underneath. Now, this may not work on this particular tool. I don't know what are the heat settings on the original foil quill? But I was just, again, using what I have in my drawer, and I know a lot of you already have this tool. And maybe you thought about this, maybe you didn't think about it, I don't know. I personally don't see myself going out and buying the foiling uh, quill hand machine, but I, I I do have the one that goes that's attached to the silhouette and I made a couple cards with it and it's pretty cool. I've seen many projects online through people doing it. Um, candles, leather bags, wallets. So this is the time of year when we all get our creativity out and we do handmade gifts, right? Oh, hopefully my head wasn't in the way. All I'm doing is tracing my stamped image. That's it. So far, so good. It's not melting my foil. That's really what I was afraid was going to happen. This is definitely not a project you wanna do with kids. This gets super hot. Think of it as like a soldering iron. Pretty much what it is. Um, so you do not want to have your kids around for this. Don't even think about it. I don't wanna stop mid project here, but I am gonna kind of speed along here so my lines may not be as nice. But I just wanna do a do this quickly and see how the reveal works, if, if it works. Now, some of these lines that are look a little thicker, I'm just gonna kinda go in there and squiggle, try to shade it, but again, for the average person that you're going to give this to, they're not gonna know that you traced a stamp. They're gonna think that you drew this, and they're gonna wonder how you drew it and got it foiled. So, that's your trade secret.
And then you can color this in with um, watercolor markers. You can color it in with uh, color pencils. You can just leave it foiled, whatever you want to do. This is going to be super thin, thin line of foiling. I think I would prefer a thicker, a more bold design if it were me, just so that the foiling would really stand out. Um, but I think this is going to be super cool. We are almost done here. And it's going to be a little sloppy because, again, in my haste here, I'm just kind of quickly doing this. it over making sure I got everything and I think I'll just real quick see if I can scribble let's do a little cursive joy there move this out of the way okay are we ready for the reveal I honestly don't know if this is going to work or not. Like I said, I was using the tool to seal up some of my stamp bags and thought, hmm, I wonder if that'll work. Ta-da! It did work. Oh, I missed the whole line right there. Whoops. Well, I can't fix it now. Well, I could, I could kind of wing it here. Let me see. Ah, pretty good, Nance. All right, so what it actually did, there you can see, is it traced my stamp image, and now it is foiled, and the little joy that I wrote on there. If you have stencils, you can do this with stencils. Um, in fact, let me see here. Let's pull out the little stencil guys. I don't know that I would recommend a plastic stencil. I would be afraid that it would eventually melt my plastic stencil unless it's a heat safe stencil. But I know somewhere I have some little some little metal stencils. Let me grab one of those. I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, I don't know where they're at, and I am not going to spend the time to look for them. But I do have some old school little metal stencils that I think would be fun to trace this in and do the same idea with those. But who knows where those guys are now? So, and again, you can do some free fall. I think I'll color this in with some maybe some watercolor markers. And again, you, you need a couple things. You either need the foil quill or if you have this little tool. It works out fine, but the important thing is you have to have heat activated foil. So there you can see how that foil transferred over onto our design there. If you wanted to do this again, let me cut another piece of that foil. And just like any foiling projects you do, you want to make sure that you keep your foil nice and clean you don't want any dust or debris on your desk you don't want to mar up your foil you want to take care of it because um, once the foil releases onto your paper it could um, it could uh, could damaged so you want to make sure that you keep that foil nice and clean and if you've never seen any of my foiling videos I have a ton of foiling videos I have some playlists on regular foiling hot foiling so I'm just going to take a leap here. I'm going to grab one of my little stencils. Let's see what we got here with this guy. Hopefully it doesn't melt it. Let's cross our fingers and see. I'm trying not to touch that stencil. It's really not melting it. I 
think if we move quickly enough, I don't have to worry about it. Don't try this at home, guys. Let Nancy ruin her stuff so you don't ruin yours. Like I said, somewhere I have a little, a little doodad of metallic, uh, metal stencils that I used to use. You know, back in the day, we all used them for like chalk and embossing paste and all that good stuff. So I have a stash of them somewhere. I got to find them. Then I'll go through and trace those with my fancy, fancy tool here. All right, it is melting the stencil now on the inside. I can see that. All right, well, let's see if this works. In theory, don't use plastic stencils. Ta-da! It does work. Come on, camera focus. There we go. So there we go. I made my own foil quill without buying the foil quill. Focus. All right. So there we go, guys. I just wanted to show you that. Again, if you have any questions, post them down below. If you have any questions or comments, I will link everything that I use for you. Again, the biggest secret here is that you have to use heat-activated foil. You cannot use deco foil, Heidi Swap foil. Um, oh, that's not true. Let me correct myself. You can use those foils if you are going to be foiling on top of uh, vinyl. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, let me grab a spare piece of vinyl here. Like heat transfer vinyl. So... Not heat transfer, regular, you know, vinyl. So this is vinyl. You know, I would cut out a decal and I would um, stick it on something. So let me show you guys. You can use regular foil because what happens is this vinyl ends up melting. I'll show you. So here's that piece of beautiful foil. This is not heat activated foil. This is, I believe, Gina, Gina K's foil. Okay. So if you wanted to stick this on something you can melt the foil onto the vinyl All right, let's see if that works. It did not work. Never mind. I don't think this tool gets hot enough. That would have been cool if it worked. Let's try that again. Let's try the, uh, where'd my silver foil go? Oh, there it is. And again, I'm not a foiling expert when it comes to this stuff. I do my regular mink foiling and my hot foiling, this kind of stuff. Don't worry, I'm not going to burn myself. I know you guys are like, eh, Nance, don't touch that thing. Um, there are lots and lots of Facebook groups where you can get a lot of information on this stuff. You want to know about mink foiling or regular hot foiling? I'm your girl. You want to know about foiling qu foil quill or stamped foiling? Not your girl, sorry. I may have gone too quickly there. Oh, that foil, pretty cool. Not that I'll do anything with it, but. Oh, can you guys see it? Focus camera. All right, I'm done playing. You guys know it works. You can try it out. And that's all I have for tonight. Thanks for watching, guys. Keep on stamping. Bye-bye.